Hello and welcome to An Academy, and this is our channel Cat for MBA, and we are here for another live GD between all these uh, great youngsters of India who are aspiring for various MBA colleges. I have uh, Mansi, Aditya, Pratik, Nitesh, Nidhi, Vivek, and Dandini with me, and they will be discussing on the topic of uh, Brexit today. Aaj wo Brexit ke baare mein baat karne wale hai, and this is going to be a GD of 40 minutes. So uh, guys, uh, I am formally welcoming you on uh, Cat for MBA, uh, that is an academy's channel for your one-stop shop for uh, MBA entrance preparation. Okay, very good evening to all of you, Mansi, Aditya, Pratik, Nitesh, Nidhi, Vivek and Nandini. Good evening everybody. Are you guys prepared for the GD? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. guys, so I will give you five minutes to prepare for your uh, uh, all the points that you want to say in a particular GD. Let's track it guys. Uh, best of luck. Go for it. Your five minutes for preparation starts now. Then we will start with the actual GD. Go for it guys. Let's track it. Okay, guys, your time's up for preparation. I hope you have uh, jotted down all the points that you wanted to, uh, that you are uh, going to say in this GD. Your time for group discussion starts now. Since this is a practice GD, we are going to discuss this issue for 40 minutes. Okay, 40 minutes tak hum is issue ko discuss karenge. I will give individual time to everybody to conclude the topic. Okay, so go for it, guys. Let's crack it. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Mansi Kapse. I'm from Pune. So our today's topic, Brexit, is a, a world-known issue to us for a very long time now. And uh, Brexit, as we all know, could be termed as a Britain's exit from the European Union, a uh, European Union which was formed in 1993. But uh, this uh, issue of Brexit, as we have been hearing for the past six to eight years uh, or ten years, is not just about now. It's been coming along for many, many years now, many decades. Um, it's been started since 1970s when Margaret Thatcher was the PM of uh, UK, and uh, Thatcher was all, uh, you know, she was in support for single market and uh, the trade and uh, everything. But then later, she was convinced that uh, you know Britain is not going in profits as much as it should have been uh, due to uh, European Union. As we all know that Europe, the being a part of European Union gives us the free pass of uh, being a part of a free market, uh, having free movement of labor, labor, avoiding war with neighboring countries, and having a single market where everyone. and could participate and could sell and buy things uh, without any restrictions but uh, in uh, 1975 when uh, uh, britain became a part of eu it started realizing many things which it didn't know uh, about it earlier things like when britain was uh, in, you know to be a part of eu you have to be a uh, paying a membership fee of around um, 17 to 20 uh, billion euros you know which is very, quite high and when britain realized that the rate of uh, return on that was just 5 to 6 or maximum 7 uh, billion euros uh, it decided to put his foot down and, and uh, also with that european union had a lot of control on uh, britain's governance whether it was related to agriculture industries fishing industries uh, or other uh, several markets uh, as example if we take as fishing industries fishing industries were hampered as European Union literally had a control over how much a person can uh, amount of uh, fishery fishery could be sold and what could be the price of it and what could be the amount quantity quality so everything was uh, governed by EU very strictly in common terms as we would uh, say it as red taping was lot during that time uh, also if we uh, speak about immigration in Britain as we all know um, Britain is known for immigrants and uh, people from Syria or South Africa such a uh, the under developed countries always want to move to the developed countries so when it came to immigration um, under eu britain faced a lot of immigration around 4 3.5 to 4 lakh immigrants per, per quarter per six monthly whereas britain was in support for only 1 to 2 lakh uh, immigrants so you know this was the type of thing which uh, was uh, they were against each other in thought processes and following policies uh, and also britain wanted to be a supercharged economy you know where uh, it could um, uh, the financial capital could flow there was a, there, there could be a, a free trade but also there would be profits in it but obviously britain wasn't able to practice it again when uh, when margaret thatcher, thatcher thought that uh, it wasn't working out uh, with support to her um, in 94 james goldsmith uh, formed referendum party and uh, during that time uh, he was in full support to free uk from um, free uk from brexit uh, eu but obviously at that time people weren't in that mindset or would or had that much faith so it failed then later in 93 uk party which is the united kingdom independence party was formed and uh, it came into lot of confidence of people people started looking up to it because its major motto of this party was to separate uk from eu so it started um, gaining the uh, trust of people uh, to uh, make make that separation and along these years uh, it started ga- it started gaining votes it started coming into the ranks of the, all the elections again then the recent election which happened before uh, the second last election which happened in 2015 Um, there's a lot of been changes during uh, these ten years in the uh, United Kingdom governance. As we all know that David Cameron was one of the most uh, influential person in this whole process. Uh, David Cameron was all in support um, of EU, and uh, he uh, gave, he told people that uh, he would um, uh, help uh, help Britain to uh, do the separation from Brexit or EU. but uh, and according to his uh, speech obviously people um, uh, were driven towards his words and uh, conservative pa- uh, conservative party which was his party won the election but again uh, the point came where uh, it had to be actually and practically implemented which was a very difficult yes, i want to add one point here that the vote 
which were made by the people in brexit referendum were not were not uh, actually there it was just give me 10 seconds i'll get on okay yeah so uh, getting back to the point uh, when david cameron um, when the party won and this was this was bound to happen practically it would it became very difficult for the uh, government to actually put put it in the process because it was a very long um, process of um, unveiling the article 50 and then getting the people and the government to sign and do all the negotiations so uh, i feel that you know at present uk uh, is in a very confused state of uh, this period of time regarding brexit okay vivek what was your point yes vivek my point was that the uh, this before the exit the uh, eu was mainly eu was mainly formed because of uh, it its main purpose was that everyone will be united so that uh, everyone get job opportunities and people from one area just like in india there are many state in eu also earlier in 1980s uh, eu or the uk was also a part of eu because it also because their trade trade was easily available people were employed and everything was fine but the thing is it, this is a one of the biggest advantage which turned ruined the eu, EU it, it, relationship with eu in the end and as a result of which the the due to the large immigration uh, large immigration brexit deal was passed and but the it there was force uh, vote in vote share when people voted for brexit it was not because uh, the people who are older who felt that like imm- due to immigration they will lose their job due to which they voted uh, for the brexit deal otherwise there it was scotland was one of the state which was still in the favor of eu eu and uh, talking about the eu it had same uh, coins like it allowed every country to free, freely participate it has it allowed each and every uh, party to have its own coin have its own rules have its own regulations but still it was a part of eu could you agree with vivek vivek that due to uh, due uh, as vivek said that uh, Uh, remaining in uh, being a part of you uh, there was uh, uh, many opportunities for employment and all that but i would like to add that uh, the eu's immigration policies doesn't uh, i mean it contradict with uh, this uh, because of eu's immigration policy there was used there was huge uh, inflow of large immigrants and uh, refugees in uh, united kingdom which uh, had a huge strain on uh, uh, uk's employment and resources so i don't think that the uh, being part of eu w- was very beneficial for uk it may uh, have uh, other uh, benefits for uk also the eu policies were overriding the uh, uk's national policies uh, it was kind uh, we, it will not be a problem if we say that the policy, uh, eu policies were uh, post upon post upon uh, united kingdom Uh, also the membership uh, as manse said that the membership charges were uh, very high uh, the uh, almost the uk had to contribute lots of money annually to uh, use annual budget uk people thought that, that this money would be spent on uk's people rather than eu by um, exiting the uh, exiting uh, Uni- uh, european union okay nidhi yes nidhi you are saying that uh, after doing the brexit there has been great impact on economy of U- uk the employment rate had fallen investment rate had fallen because it was half of one third of imports the uk made was from us itself so it will have a strong uh, impact on its relationship with eu in the future as well okay we just don't know that what will be the impact of uh, 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 living uh, of brexit on uk Uh, on india or on uh, world economy because we don't know how they cut the deal with eu it is on the path of uncertainty right now we just can't comment uh, comment how it will uh, how the economy of the world and uk will uh, react to it nidhi go ahead good evening sir and good evening to all present there the topic is brexit and brexit is all about uk and european union uk 
United Kingdom of Great Britain, a globally influential center of finance and culture. It, it is also known as the home of both modern parliamentary democracy and the industrial revolution. And European Union is a political and economic union of states that are located primarily in Europe. It aims of ending the frequent wars between neighbors, which culminated in Second World War. And Brexit is the United Kingdom's departure from European Union. It was long-awaited historical move, which has brought an important change in the policy and politics of remaining 27 European Union member states. Well, the exit of Britain from European Union was actually a decision of citizens there. They said Britain is losing out a big deal by staying in European Union. It has to pay million of pounds each week as a contribution to the European budget and migration from the European Union. But Britain is creating an imbalance in welfare schemes of UK government. But some of them opposed it. They said Britain is a net gainer if it stays in European Union. And Britain had a troubled relationship with European Union since the beginning and has made various attempts in past to break away from it. So as we know that in June 2016, David Cameron, the PM of UK, they followed referendum, as Mansi said, in which 52% voted in favor of leaving the European Union and 48% voted in favor uh, and 48 percent voted to remain a member. David Cameron supported continued membership in U EU, but, EU, but following uh, the success of leave vote, he resigned to make way for new PM, which was Theresa May. She notified the European Union of the country's intention on 29th March 2017, which was the beginning of Brexit process. On March 20, uh, on 14th March 2019, Parliament voted for May to ask the European Union delay Brexit, but failed to get her agreement approved. She also resigned in July. And then Boris Johnson became PM after he beat Jeremy Hunt in the race of becoming leader of the Conservative Party. From David Cameron to Boris Johnson, they all belong to this Conservative Party. After this, British government and European Union agreed a withdrawal agreement. Parliament approved the agreement but rejected passing it into law before 31st October deadline and asked them for the third Brexit delay. Then general election was held on 12th December. Mr. Johnson won a large majority in election and then the withdrawal Agreement was ratified by the UK on 23rd Jan and by the European Union on 30th Jan. And hence it came into force of 30, force on 31st Jan 2020. Uh, I would like to point out something Nidhi noted. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, noted between that she said that the citizens actually wanted uh, Britain to get away from um, the Euro. European Union. But you know, this term of citizens and coming into effect has been for the past one to two decades. Whereas when you go back in 70s or 80s, there was a term known as Euroscepticism. Okay, where yes. people uh, actually, not only the people, but the other outside uh, countries and the government also had a lot of uh, restrictions towards it. When we talk about a, a foreign party controlling your uh, governmental, your country rules, it uh, creates a lot of aggression between uh, the uh, people. You know, it, it creates a lot of um, opposition and a lot of rivalries where there is a lot of mixed opinions of people. So this is also what led to the uh, people thinking that, you know, Britain should not be a part of European uh, European Union. Union. Right, Nandini, Pratik and Aditya, please, uh, uh, you can also open up in the group discussion. Come on. Also, I would like to say that Nitish, the uh, UK... Uh, Nitish, uh, I'm yes, sir. sorry, Nitish, just give me a minute, Nitish. Nandini is trying to say something from uh, yes, a couple of minutes. Yes, Nandini, sure, you sure. can go ahead. 
Nandini, are you there with us? Achha. In this case, Nitish, you can go ahead with your point. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I think that the, uh, right from the start when the uh, UK was trying to exit, uh, uh, exit the European Union, uh, UK was always, uh, uh, I mean, they were uh, in the loss. Uh, like uh, in the March 19, they were trying to exit uh, uh, European Union without a uh, without a deal, but uh, they again backtracked and uh, they were uh, again backtracked and uh, uh, continued the negotiation. This again happened in April. They uh, again threatened to uh, leave uh, European Union, but they uh, but they again started to uh, negotiate uh, until uh, as uh, uh, as Nidhi said until uh, 31st March uh, 2019. Uh, I think it was always on the in the loss. Uh, the uh, UK was always in the loss on the financial basis. It was uh, trying to, it, it was just trying to protect its sovereignty by, uh, by the uh, because the policies of the European Union were kind of forced on it, and it were uh, it were overriding the uh, UK's uh, UK's uh, policies. Nitesh, I just wanted to ask you one thing. Like you're saying that financially, it was getting a lot of backwardness uh, in term in terms of finances or economic. But then if you actually look at the polls uh, of the referendum, uh, as we've seen that the Northern Ireland has been getting separated from Europe and then the Scotland is also uh, saying that they want to stay. But when you look at the polls of London, London actually wants to stay. You know, it doesn't want to get separated from European Union. London being exactly. the financial capital of the world is saying that it wants to stay with European Union. So a how part can of uh, just because of financial capital... capital. Uh, just uh, financial capital says that if we want to stay, that doesn't mean that whole country, uh, whole uh, citizens of the country wants to stay. Just because if we, uh, Mumbai, uh, vote for some party, doesn't mean that party will come in power. They have to take the uh, votes from all over the country. And it goes with the majority, right? Yeah. yeah. Pratik, uh, Pratik, are you there with us? Can you uh, come up with your points? Nandini is also trying to say something, but I think there is some technical problem here. Pratik, can you hear me? Mike Ross, are you there? Sir, can I continue? Just a minute, uh, Nitesh. Actually, she is trying to say something, but she is not able to. Yes, Nandini, you can sir, go sir. ahead. Achha. In that case, Nitesh, you can continue. Also, sir, this uh, Britain, uh, sir, I think Nandi is trying to say something. Yeah, yes, but uh, she is not audible, actually. Okay, okay. You can... So, should I continue? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, uh, this Brexit deal was, I think it is uh, pro for uh, both uh, European Union as well as, uh, as well as for UK in some terms. Uh, as we know that uh, the UK had uh, European uh, law, European free with European free law, 500 new people were added to the UK's population every day. And to protect uh, UK sovereignty, uh, it was important to cut themselves from UK, uh, sir. Because of the inflow of the, as I said earlier, the inflow of the uh, inflow of migrants and refugees from uh, because of uh, European free law or the immigration. Policies there, there was huge inflow of uh, immigrants and refugees. There was a huge strain on employment and the resources of the uh, of the UK. Also, the UK uh, EU is free to make their own immigration laws uh, with the help of 27 other uh, member countries uh, and the welfare uh, practice and have a long pending issues of having a common currency of euros. Uh, as you know that the UK's uh, currency was pounds. Sterling and the uh, European and other countries' currency was uh, euro. So, sir, there was a, uh, even if there was a free trade, there was still a problem of currency uh, having a problem currency. Now, the uh, European Union can make policies or laws according to the um, uh, member uh, member current member uh, of the European Union uh, having the same currency without uh, Britain. Also, sir, Please, uh, uh, they, can you guys talk about the impact? Is the impact ke yes, sir. Sakte? Yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, I want let to me, sir, sir, let me complete my... Sir, sir, give me 30 seconds. Okay, Nitesh. Actually... Uh, am I audible? Good. Yes, Nandini yeah. is audible. Nandini, are you there? So, am I audible now? Yes, you are audible yes, now. Yes. Nitesh, 
you can uh, complete when Nandini completes. Okay, she is. Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead, Nandini. Yes, sir. So, uh, like many of you have Brexit. What is happening? What uh, what the uh, what is their thinking and all of this? So, I would just like to like uh, take out some key points of all this discussion that has already happened. So basically, we have discussed that Brexit is basically a, a short term for Brexit, British Brexit from uh, European Union. As well as we have discussed that a new trade agreement comes to place the tariffs and can cause a lot of friction. The cost of travel and communication will also be increased, and the UK, uh, like the immigration, uh, who could also hurt a lot. So I would just like to uh, summarize some of the consequences of Brexit for the UK. So the growth of UK has been uh, faced a lot of disadvantage as it has done a lot of damage to UK's economic growth. How it has done is earlier it was it has already slowed down to two two point four percent and now it has uh, like gone down to one point five percent. I think this is a major point to be uh, look uh, looked over by UK because the growth rate is falling like tremendously. The uh, pound has also uh, like fallen a lot. Uh, the trade, the exports and imports are going to be a lot of expenses now, which which is going to actually affect the standard of living of people living in the UK, because uh, the, there will be rise of inflation and the imports will be increased. Uh, exports are, will eventually increase because they'll be out of European Union and their products will be expensive in the uh, European Union. Jobs are uh, like getting a lot of affected because. Uh, Jobs were already low in UK. The skilled workers were already being uh, like there was a lot of shortage of uh, three million skilled workers by three twenty thirty, and which is going to be affected much after that because it was already uh, like measured that by twenty thirty a shortage of three million skilled workers would be there, and if they are like coming out of European Union, there will be no such problems. Uh, other other problems which we have already discussed with the Ireland, London, and Scotland, which they are facing because London was eventually not in the uh, decision to come out. Uh, I'm sorry, am I audible? Yes, yes. Your voice yeah. is cracking, Nandini. Your voice is cracking. The, so okay. Brexit had a long term impact on European Union. And UK, when UK leaves the European Union, higher barrier to trades, capital flows, and labour mobility will affect output and jobs not only in UK but also in the remaining 27 European Union member states. Since Brexit means both parties will withdraw from a frictionless economic relationship, there will be cost on both sides. The UK is among the European Union's Twenty seventh largest trading partner, accounting for about thirteen percent of its trade in goods and services. Beside bilateral trade link, there are substantial supply chain trade link between European Union twenty seven and UK that involves several countries. Financial links are strong. Migration flows have also strengthened. Reversing integration will hurt long-term output and jobs in European Union. If UK and European Union settle on a standard FTA, that is free trade agreement, where tariff good trade are low, but with higher non-tariff barrier, estimate that European Union twenty-seven real output will be lower. उटनी 
a large amount of companies have shifted from UK to EU after this Brexit deal, if you see. And there was not a Brexit deal referendum which was passed in 2016 and which was finally passed in 2020. There was no uh, go stable government formed in uh, Brexit. This is uh, this is what I can make you assure that this was not a democratic deal and this was something which was related to politics. I disagree with you, Vivek. That that you said that it was it was a uh, it was not a democratic deal. How can you? I mean, uh, I want to uh, ask you. How can you say that the uh, the uh, United Kingdom took a referendum? They asked the people uh, if they want to stay in European Union or not. This is the democratic way to yeah, uh, make a Brexit deal. Right, right. Nitesh, I agree with you that they but took a referendum. But if you look at it, the referendum is not binding upon the government. Years. It is not binding upon the government to take the uh, poll and, you know, to follow that only. It is just a part to take an opinion, but it is not binding on the government to follow the referendum. They can take a new referendum or they can, uh, you know, you know, take uh, uh, votes in the common house or the house of lords, but it is not the referendum is not binding on the government. Instead of asking the representative, they, they directly ask the people of the country. I mean, uh, like uh, like you said that uh, they uh, they can take the uh, referendum again. But if they took took a referendum uh, now, and what is the point in taking the referendum uh, referendum again? I mean, I don't think that the, there will be any changes in the result. No, no, uh, it's not about who is leading party, also, right? When the leading party or the leading person, one person will assure you one thing and the other will, uh, the other thing. But it's all about who takes actually the stands and implements it. You know, today I might say that, yeah, the Brexit will happen if you vote for me. And uh, that is what David Cameron did. But then later when he won actually and the referendum actually came to uh, leave from EU, he resigned. You know, he didn't stay for practically implementing the Brexit till it happened. You know, he resigned. I think he was afraid. He was afraid, he was afraid of the consequences if the Brexit deal was uh, not in uh, favor. Uh, I think uh, he was afraid because uh, the uh, deal he was trying to cut was not in favor of a win-win situation. That's why he was yeah, afraid of the consequences. The referendum was to uh, to leave, right? So what? Yeah. It's not about win-win situation. It's about going with what the people want, right? And which said that we should leave. Yeah, I, I, I just commented on the. Uh, uh, he said that uh, Vivek said that it was it was not democratic. It was not democratic. After the Brexit deal, won the referendum was Guys, was not. Vivek and Nandini are trying to say something. Yes, go ahead. I think uh, if we are talking about the referendum, the people in the uh, in the Vivek, Scotland still want to be Vivek, a part uh, of. Acha, Vivek, one second. First, let Nandini complete her point. Then you can uh, complete yours. Yes, Nandini, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, as we are talking about the referendum, it was basically to ask people their point of view about how they want to deal with it. Either they want to stay in the European Union or they want to leave. And if we talk about it, some voters were actually old and working class people. So they were afraid of the free movement of immigration, immigrants and refugees uh, coming in the UK. They were also claiming that citizens of the poor countries, which were a part of the European Union, were taking the benefits of jobs in the UK, which was which was not right according to them. According to them, for the uh, it was not not fair for the people resident in the UK, which were UK born, and small businessmen were frustrated also by the UK fees. They, they were feeling that UK is not getting what it is paying to be a part of uh, European Union. Some yes. also said they wanted, like London, Scotland, and Netherlands, another island. They said that they wanted to stay, and they were like happy with the free trade with European Union. So I think everybody has a different opinion. Like if we talk about this DD also, everybody is having their own opinion. Nobody, nobody can like impose their opinion on other person. Everybody think in a different way. So right. I think it was the job of the government to take the right decision. They have taken the poll. Of the of the people okay. as a democratic country, they have asked people what they want. But the final decision should be of the government taking everything into consideration, not only the uh, older and working class people and not only the small businessmen which are frustrated by the fees which UK is paying. Correct. Nandini, I agree with you and just uh, supporting with what you said. Actually, this was a social point only to get away from Brexit. You know, people were actually socially connected or socially influenced by it. 
but when people started forming parties you know and getting into politics just for the fact that they want uk to be separated from britain that is when this whole thing turned into a political situation you know it just didn't remain a social thing or a uh, economic thing but it completely turned into a political thing which what nitesh was saying earlier that you know how could they take the decision uh, no, no. I, was, I was not i was not saying that uh, they took the decision uh, i was just comment i just commented on uh, vivek's point that uh, he said that it was uh, not democratic of the uk's government and i said that they took the referendum they asked the people they took the vote Yeah. Okay. Okay. Guys, 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 yeah. Also, we know that any of the event or incident has both the aspects, the benefits and the losses. After leaving the European Union, UK goes to goes through the benefit and some loss also. If UK remain in European Union, it could benefit in terms of securities, consumer good, business, business and etc. But UK had loss in terms of money job foreign exchange and many more like if uh, we talk about its benefit it get benefit after uh, uh, getting out from european union european union membership limits britain's international influence ruling out an independent seat at the world trade organization but in terms of security like uh, if it uh, remains in european union the union better equips britain to take tackle threats to security including terrorism and cross border crime and uh, if in terms of money we see britain contributes billion of point a uh, billion of pounds in membership fees to the european union every year but it gets benefit in uh, terms of job improved global trade agreement and more selective immigration could have a positive effect on the british job market right but uh, it get yes no like you you just took the uh, topic on the global level or the uh, world trade union level i just wanted to ask your views of of how you all feel that how like we spoke about european union or brexit or uk but how do you think that brexit is affected the whole world you know guys last 5 minutes so i would i would i would come to that point but before that i want to comment i want to comment on nidhi's earlier statement she said that the pound is falling the economy of economy of uk is falling the uh, inflation is high in uk uh, but sir i think the, uh, this all may be uh, temporary uh, issue uh, temporary uh, things uh, in the uk affecting them uh, the i the we just have to see that how they cut the deal also there is no coherent plan but the uk is uh, planning to establish a soft brexit over hard brexit which will help uk to remain in single market Uh, without losing its well established trade and uh, financial uh, market uh, so sir uh, also uh, one great person said that when a uh, big tree falls a uh, shade so i think uh, this is uh, that kind of uh, thing right now in uk yes nandini nandini was saying something so guys last 5 minutes of your discussion okay uh, yeah aditya go ahead yes i i just wanted to say that government should take decision only by considering each and every aspect because i think it in a democratic country if we talk about india like due to the lockdown what happened or due to the voting okay why because they were like in that uh, corona virus could be uh, like very much stopped and please help me out but now when jobs are being affected it is like now they are nandini can you be more loud yeah uh am i am i like clear now yes yes, yes you are audible now go yeah. ahead yeah yeah so i think like there it is good that they have taken the poll of people they have like uh, issued a referendum they have asked people what they want but at last the decision should be of government which is in the uh, uh like it should be good for the country and not only by listening to some few people which like uh, thinking rationally right yeah, supporting to what you said like obviously because people are the only one who elected that uh, following government you know so the people should have faith in the government to actually take the better and good decisions for them uh, as well yeah people actually uh, like they react very fast including us we we react very fast right now for us maybe this thing is right 
moving out of uh, european union maybe like looking good for them ki acha hoga but after some time when the jobs and the economy will be lowered maybe maybe if it lowers they will be then uh, like pushing the government that why they have taken such decision why they have not uh, like gone through analysis and all so they they will be the one who will be like uh, cursing the government there so i think it should be the government's decision of how and when and what to do right okay, also guys. i think like when we speak about soft uh, soft brexit hard brexit as nitesh pointed out i think many countries like norway or switzerland or um, ukraine which are not part of the ua still have a bilateral trade going on with the eu you know they are not a uh, active part of the eu which they don't get votes in the parliamentary system but they get the uh, get other freedom which are uh, mentioned in the eu you know so britain could actually opt for that also where it could just have a uh, U- european economic economic uh, you know i think the term yeah. is like european economic area where it could just be a part of the economic trade or the uh, manpower trade uh, regarding but wouldn't have obviously the votes in the parliament so i think that, that could be one solution to having a soft brexit yeah okay guys uh... that was a fantastic gd your 40 minutes for uh, group discussion are over uh, very good contribution from all of you uh, nitesh go ahead and conclude the topic for us yes sir sir uh, so uh, i think that we can't comment on uh, we can't comment on that uh, right now that uh, the uk made a right decision or not uh, we will have to see the deal they cut with eu and the uh, economic impact on Uh, world uh, on UK economy, India and the world as well. Uh, also, uh, we we will have to uh, see that how the people react to it after, like uh, they have uh, they cut the deal and everything, and still it not uh, in the favor. Like they uh, like Nidhi uh, Nidhi and uh, Manasi said that uh, the people will curse the government for it. So we will have to. look up to that we can't just say uh, it's on the uh, uk is on the path of uncertainty right now and we can't comment on anything uh, of that but if i th- if india were in the position of uk i would support the uh, uk uh, india's decision to protect its sovereignty and identity uh, uh, identity uk yes nidhi go ahead and uh, conclude the topic Uh, as from this discussion on brexit and it will impact on global term let us to conclusion that every coin have both sides same as brexit will give advantage to uk somewhat but as it impact may also damage or lower the economy of uk and other country as well who currently trading with them being in european union member as britain import more than export they have low resources hence they are dependent on china europe and india for its import europe providing free trade area to britain till now so exit from european union is somehow risky for the britain in long term and the european union would continue to be the world's second largest market it would also remain as the uk's biggest trading partner okay manshi go ahead and conclude the topic for us yeah so we've had a lot of uh, discussion on this topic and i think the less the more we talk about it the more uh, it is to argue about it because it's just a uh, decades and decades of issue which is just come into consideration of the uh, parliament of uk and uh, the brexit has just happened this year Uh, in january month 2020 and i think it's too soon to comment on the fact that where it will go or not because it again came into the situation of covid and now yet it has to cover up with brexit as well as covid so you know it is just too uh, wrongfully it is too it would be too wrong to actually say that britain took a wrong step it will be on futuristic basis uh, but uh, being a part of the whole world i think it would be a major impact on the world not only on eu or uh, britain and only time and other economic factors would tell us uh, what this decision has led us into thank you okay nandini go ahead and conclude the topic for us yes sir so we have discussed a lot about it we have discussed a lot about the consequences it's going to face so all the consequences which uh, brexit will have will not only affect uk or 
you know, European Union. I think it should affect the whole world because any political or any uh, changes that takes place in the global market affects the capital market of every country. So I think it's going to affect us, US. I think every country which is uh, like somehow related with UK and uh, European Union. Let's hope for the best. What happens and uh, if it, it should be in the it should have a long, good effect that will long term. Maybe it may face some problems in the short term of growth and uh, currencies being fa- uh, falling down, but it should have a long term good effect. Whatever decision they take. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vivek. Go ahead and conclude the topic for us. Sir, according to me, the the Brexit deal. i would like to uh, i would like to favor this brexit deal that it has become a good for the people who are in brexit by voting they they wanted something because something different from the which uh, rules were decided in general they wanted something different but uh, there is one downside of it due to it their economy has fallen and they cannot uh quickly get uh, some renunciation some uh, for that they need to be a part uh, and uh, they should not do it do this in uh, they should have thought about economy first that it will it, it has to be not impacted not only on their economy not only on their people but people across globe it will be a strong impact india also have in the way sub- uh, supported their them by uh, in giving a, by quadrupling their investments but still it will have a greater impact which is unknown to us right now okay okay wonderful guys wonderful discussion uh, everybody uh, thank you so much uh, now coming for to your feedbacks i think so this was one of uh, one hell of a gd you guys have pulled off uh, in this session nidhi uh, nitesh vivek nandini and mansi very good discussion uh mansi i like the way that uh, you open up every discussion har bar aap discussion ko bahut acha open up karte ho you uh, tell in a lot of data you tell about the historical background but uh, make sure that you do not now introduction is is the most important part of any gd okay do it in a very crisp way uh, what happened today is uh, you stretch it along and you put in a lot of data so there is there is a chance of ambiguity among the members that where to pick up the group discussion but this is your strong arena you always uh, read the topic very properly and then come up to the gd and contribute uh, at par level so this is one of your strength please uh, work on that uh, you have always been uh, a good consistent performer in the group discussion i'm sure you are going to come out with uh, flying colors with whichever uh, Thank you, sir. examination that you are focusing on Now, guys, understand the topic. Okay, topic का characteristic क्या था, उसका essence क्या था. Now, Brexit, uh, for a matter of fact, like the EU, has evolved over a period of time. Now, European Union, in the beginning, when it constituted itself, it was supposed to be a economic uh, organization. But over a period of time, everybody got involved uh, it in so much. that it 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 gained a political importance over the period of time and since a lot of people are connected to this organization and the member countries it becomes a social issue also so for topic like brexit which is one of the most ambitious policies of the united nation it becomes a 360 degree approach to the uh, discussion kisi bhi topic par aap baat kar sakte ho you can talk about the economic uh, impact on both united kingdom uh, european union then on the globe as well as on india also then social aspects are also there in question uh, correctly pointed out by mansi vivek uh, nandini uh, nitesh and nidhi also uh, ki uh, immigration status change ho jayega employment status change ho jayega so all these social problems uh, there were uh, into consideration and definitely mansi uh, i did like uh, your point when wherein you uh, put in about the conservative politics that the people of uh, united kingdom did now everybody like you said correctly that it was supposed to be a social phenomena but later on everybody started to uh, do politics over it and uh, mm-hmm. turn turn around the importance of that particular topic right mm-hmm. so ye ek cheez hai however there is no end to discussion like this brexit jaise topic par hum baat jab karte hain absolutely there is no end to discussion we can go round and round and round uh, about this topic 
However, you point, uh, you missed out on one important point. Uh, you guys talked about is it uh, going to be? This is based on futuristic fact now. Whether it will be a good uh, decision from the United Kingdom, will it be harmful for United Kingdom or uh, will it be harmful for the European Union as well? What you what you missed out is that the UK and the European Union both are working on a transitory phase. Okay. Jo unka withdrawal agreement tha. Nobody talked about that particular thing. That was one key point, guys. Nitesh, I don't know how Nitesh missed out on that thing. Generally, uh, he knows uh, about that particular thing. Mansi also. So, is ke upar agar aap baat karte, the withdrawal agreement which uh, guarantees that there is a smooth transition of uh, United Kingdom coming out of the Brexit having minimal impact on European Union as well as uh, on the UK. So, this point ko aap, uh, ko focus karna chahiye tha. somebody should have done uh, on that particular thing. However, like I said, this is a group discussion. Uh, everybody tries to prove their point and the GD simply changes its course. Nandini, uh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, you did, you did. Now, Nandini, you actually put up very good points uh, in this group discussion. I don't know, there was some technical error from your side. So, uh, your points were actually not clear so that anybody could take up in the group discussion. But uh, I like the couple of points that you have made that uh, the government, everybody is, is going to take or is going to uh, take the government into account if this fails or this succeeds. Even if the government has gone for referendum, uh, this is only a tool. However, like Mansi correctly pointed out, this is not mandatory on the government. But I like the way that you pointed out uh, uh, the social aspect of that particular thing. Baki Nidhi, uh, you were, <coughs> since this is your first uh, group discussion today, I like the way that you participated. Uh, you did your research good. Now, Brexit, when we talk about Brexit, even Mansi had a lot of statistics with her. Nidhi also had a lot of statistics with her. Nitesh ke paas bhi uske related bhot zada statistics te. So you guys, statistics are actually uh, your power cards. Okay. Jabhi bhi aapke paas kisi bhi topic ke related uh, facts hote hai, statistics hote hai. Use it at the right time. So you, when you counter somebody, you put it, uh, if you do it with uh, statistical data, your point, uh, the value of your point, uh, wo uska pagda zora bhari ho jata hai. However, uh, Vivek, uh, you also contributed well in this discussion. So, particularly fantastic discussion, guys. Uh, Mansi, Nidhi, Nitesh, Nandini and Vivek. Phenomenal, phenomenal. We just need to work around the corners for everybody. But uh, since this is a learning phase, we are learning. And ultimately, uh, whichever exam you guys are targeting, whether it's CAT, ho, SNAP, ho, uh, ZAT, ho, TISS, ho, all uh, the examination, I am very sure you are going to, uh, yes, I am very sure you are going to come out with flying colors in all the group discussions. Okay. So, thank you so much, guys, for uh, participating in today's GD. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, discussing among uh, each other since this was a hot yes, topic. Yes, sir. <laughs> and thanks to you, sir, for giving this opportunity. Definitely. definitely. We will do this every Sunday. Har Sunday, hum, uh, sir? Practice karenge. Yes, yes. But I think this GD is not only improving our like ability to do good in GD, but it is also increasing our incre increasing a lot of our general knowledge. Yes, because yes. that we have not studied much about Brexit, but because of this GD uh, being occurred on Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, we have studied a lot and like gone through a lot of analysis and data today. And thank you for that. Yes, Nandini. In that case, I would like to uh, recommend you please go through my profile on Anacademy. Uh, special classes maybe or YouTube maybe I have covered a lot of uh, GD topics, political uh, topics, uh, economic topics, social topics. Bhot zada cover kiye hai maine. You can just uh, check it out. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, Nitesh, uh, you were also fantastic today. Uh, like uh, we discussed on uh, in the last video, also, we really need to work on uh, uh, you being a little more. Uh, you having a more composure in the group discussion. I could see when Mansi uh, came up with a particular point and she directed that point towards you, uh, you, you, you became a little offended and you said, no, I'm just clarifying to the point what uh, Vivek said. Understand this is a group discussion. A group discussion hai. 
तो वी हैव टू कंसिडर एवरीबडीज पॉइंट सब लोगों का कंसिडर पॉइंट कंसिडर करना है एंड अकॉर्डिंगली फिर हमें कंट्रीब्यूट करना है पार्टिसिपेट करना है ग्रुप डिस्कशन में और एक गाइस तो इज दिस क्लियर विद एवरीबडी यस सर यस यस सर यस यस Nandini, Nandini is saying something. Can you please tell where should I work more on? Uh, like I said, Nandini, your your language is uh, very good. You use uh, you have a command over English and you participate well in the group discussion. However, there was some technical problem uh, in this group discussion today, so we were not able to hear you properly. Uh, your voice was actually the pitch was high and low. so we could hear uh, sometimes we could hear properly sometimes we could not hear you at all so that's the thing Pro probably in the next dd uh, when we have a uninterrupted uh, participation from your side we will definitely work on that however i will share it uh, on the group also i'll share the details on the group also all right thank you so much yes sir yes. so we didn't talk about the impact of uh, brexit on india <laughs> yes like i said see This is a topic I like this. Question. The topic like this, there is no end to discussion, Nidhi. Unfortunately, we had forty minutes of time. There was a uh, yes, sir, clock yes, ticking sir. on us. So, forty minutes. Me, jitna ho sakta hai, utne topics uh, ham logon ne cover kiye. Okay, so uh, that is that is there. Impact uh, India ke upar tha, world ke upar tha, UK yes, ke upar tha. Uh, यूरोपियन यूनियन के ऊपर था ये सारी चीजें डिस्कस करनी थी एंड इट डिड कवर आई लाइक द पॉइंट व्हिच मानसी इन द इंट्रोडक्शन शी टोल्ड अबाउट द फिशिंग इंडस्ट्री फिशिंग इंडस्ट्री इज इज वन ऑफ द ग्लूमिंग इंडस्ट्रीज इन द यूके एज इज हैव इफ दे डू नॉट गिव एक्सेस टू ब्रिटेन वाटर द फिशिंग इंडस्ट्री फॉर द यूरोपियन यूनियन इज गोइंग टू टेक अ हिट तो ऐसी सारी चीजें है there are uh, particularly a lot of things but we had limit of 40 minutes and uh, there are so many enthusiastic uh, participants today nitesh hai nandini hai vivek hai mansi hai aap the unfortunately pratik and uh, aditya they could not participate because of some technical issue but theek okay, hai we will work on that particular thing all right guys so is that it yes sir thank you yes, so sir. much thank you yes, so much thank you so much Uh, joining uh, on this group discussion guys you have a fantastic evening ahead you guys take care uh, bye bye guys have a good evening ahead let's track it guys thank you sir thank you sir thank bye you bye 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 guys bye bye, bye sir